machinery and mechanical hubs. You know, I used to think this stuff was a very big thing. You know, especially when you come across it for the very first time, machinery and mechanical hubs. You know, the way it's been pronounced, the way it's been mentioned, that oh, this I'm, I'm coming to do a crazy thing, and so on and so forth. But, well, as I would have it, a lot of things are simpler than we think. All we just have to do is to get access to the required information at the right time. So in this particular video, we're talking about machine and agent one course. And before I start, I would, let you, I would like to let you know that it's going to be a crime for me to teach you this topic without taking it through income and subscription effects of our course. So if you happen to be one of our students, obviously, and I've seen this particular class, and I haven't mentioned anything about income and subscription effects to you before, if you've not been allowed to go through the classes on income and subscription effects, please, you may just stop this video right now and report to me. Alright, so just, that's, that's a criminal offense because you are likely not going to understand this thing at all. Alright, so let's talk about, let's get into today's topic machine and ancient demand course. Now, they are basically demand course, alright. And I think um, from my readings, Masha was the one, the first person who kind of sketched the demand curve or what have you. Or, so, how about this history anyway? So, the demand curve basically shows the relationship between the price of a product and the respective point in the market at uh, those and the, and the respective uh, points in the market. So, when the price of something is this, what is the point in the market? When the price changes to that, so how does the consumer respond to uh, this change? So, so, you have to call that connects all of those uh, points together. Alright, that's not uh, big. So what's the machine demand for? The machine demand for shows how a consumer's demand for products responds to price changes if income or budget all right, wasn't compensated or adjusted uh, for price changes. Okay, so here, now the, the, the reason why you have something like the um, the machine the bank will fill out because once the market will fill out response to price changes if income was wasn't compensated or adjusted for price changes. The reason why that is there, that clause is there, is uh, simply uh, because there is always an income and substitution effect of a price change. Okay, and that was what I was saying at the beginning of this class that it is not going to be a great thing, it's, it's a criminal offense for me to introduce you to this topic without. Having you go through income as a channel express uh, first. Okay, so a uh, price change would you know lead to effects, there will be a substitution effect, and there's going to be an income effect. So by now you must know what substitution effect uh, income effects already is. And substitution effect is kind of is defined. Okay, if the price will increase, substitution effect will always lead to a reduction in the quantity demand of that product whose price has increased, and it is going to lead to uh, the Reduction in the demand for the other product oh, that is now basically cheaper. All right. So then we also have the income effect uh, aspect of this, which is talking about the changes uh, in quantity demanded as a result of uh, a change in real income now or real world. All right. So the, the income itself, the normal income itself, may not have changed, but because the price has stayed down, the purchasing power. We are talking about purchasing power and the purchasing power. Of the individual may have risen or fallen, all right, and that is that eventually leads us to you know, the shifting of uh, the budget uh, line. So, this effect just you know takes us along uh, the same difference for but you know different budget lines, so it's the, the pirates of uh, the budget line, all right. So, that's just a uh, rush through, okay. Now, what do we mean when we say that uh, the budget wasn't compensated by just text to uh, price? Um, yeah. I just said that to, to price changes. So, uh, machine demand curve is just trying to tell us how uh, a consumer is going to alter the quantity demand of his uh, products having to consider the income and substitution effect. Okay, it's all going on together. So, what is happening here is that uh, there is less as well as there is a price increase. Now, a price increase would, a uh, substitution effect will tell us that a price increase will lead to a reduction in the what is the demand of the product, right? Alright, so now that reduction is, uh, that price increase is a reduction in the purchasing power of the consumer, which takes which, uh, takes the consumer away from, you know, um, its total utility before to an inferior utility, like to a lesser total utility. But 
So that's that's basically what I want. Okay, it takes the customer from um, where it was before to uh, uh, to uh, the 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 in the first form now shift inwards. All right, so bringing us to a lower level of the utility. All right, so that's what machine has demand for. So the machine uh, is saying that okay, there is a substitution effect. All right, and there is an income effect. All right, so what is the total effect? So machine demand curve is all about okay, uh, sketching the total effect of a price change of a product. So it's like it's, it's a demand curve that sketches the total effect of a price change of a product. All right, so that's just it. The total effect is just telling us okay, how is price demand um, eventually responding? All right, um, how we consider the income and substitution effect. So that's what we say. So here. Well, well, what I was trying to explain when I said adjusted for price changes, when you do not adjust your income. So now, I was saying that the purchasing power of the consumer has now reduced. Okay, so to adjust, to, to, to compensate that, alright, to ensure that the consumer still, um, still um, enjoys the same amount of utility would mean that we have to adjust the consumer's income. Okay, so now uh, an increase in the price of the product has reduced the consumer's purchasing power. So we are kind of giving the consumer money now. All right, so we are adding, giving the consumer money. So that is, we are making adjustments for that price change. We are giving the consumer money to maintain its purchasing power. Okay, so when we give the consumer money to maintain its purchasing power, so that means we are trying to eliminate the income effect. Okay, because the income effect is saying that uh, the purchasing power has reduced and the total utility has, uh, has fallen. Um, as a result of a price uh, increase. But now we are saying that okay, give this consumer this amount of money back that is just equivalent to what he lost in price in terms of prices. So what the consumer lost in terms of price they are giving the consumer back in terms of uh, income. So that the consumer's real income is constant, so that the purchasing power is constant. But under machine uh, demand uh, call, that is not the case. We do not compensate the consumer. The consumer is not giving anything. So as long as the price has increased and um, as long as the price has increased and the purchasing power has reduced, so what is going to happen to point to the market? I will consider these two things. Okay, so uh, if on the other hand there was a price fall, alright, so a price fall would mean that the consumer's purchasing power has increased, and that takes the consumer to a higher level of utility, that is a higher level of um, indifference, or you know, talking about the income effect now. Okay, so to compensate for that would mean to take away some income from the consumer because he wants to maintain the consumer's utility. Okay, so that means to take away some income from the consumer. So, uh, as far as uh, the machine and demand curve is concerned, you would not bother to take away um, some income from the consumer when there is a price fall. All right, and the consumer has, you know, experienced an increase in uh, real income or purchasing power. So that's that's what. Uh, machine and demand curve is talking about. That's why it's called the uncompensated demand curve. Okay, that is the unadjusted, so something like that. I don't know if it is kind of uh, generally acceptable. Okay, the, un the unadjusted uh, uh, demand curve. We are not compensated for that uh, income, uh, we are not compensating income for the price change. Okay, whatever has happened, has happened. It's just like something has happened. So, what is the result? All right. What is the result? So that is what machine demand curve is uh, all about. Okay, then so that is also what I call that for the machine demand curve is known as the uncompensated uh, demand curve. Now, what about the initial demand curve? The initial demand curve is just the opposite. Okay, and it's always down to the Now, why do I call it the opposite? The initial demand curve is the compensated demand curve. Okay, because uh, just like I have explained, uh, a price increase. Okay, would eventually be a lower purchasing a lower purchasing power. Alright? A lower purchasing power would mean a lower level of total utility. I'm talking about the income effects. Okay. Alright. Uh, a lower level of total utility, total utility. Okay, but under the uh Asian um uh Asian, Asian demand power, so here you compensate the uh the consumer, alright, that is now that uh, there is an increase in the price of the product and there is a lower level of utility, okay, you give the consumer some money back right, to ensure that the old level of total utility is maintained. Okay, so you have to ensure that the old level of total utility is maintained. So you are giving the consumer some money. Now, if if there is a price fall, okay, if there is a 
price point, uh, eventually you'll be taking away some income from the consumer. All we just have to do, all we are trying to do here is to maintain the same level of total utility. So that's what we are trying to do. So under the Asian demand curve, we are, we are the consumer is maintaining the same level of total utility regardless of the price changes. So what you are now looking for is the quantity demanded, what is happening to the quantity demanded after you have compensated uh, the consumer's income for the price change. Okay, so that's why the initial demand curve is known as the compensated uh, demand curve. Now, from what I've been explaining, if you are compensating income, okay, uh, other the initial demand curve, now if you are compensating income, when there's a price for uh, in, uh, income increases and take away income from it, so yeah, that's just the, the word compensated. So whether you are taking any money or you are adding money, is uh, compensated. Uh, compensated. Okay, so now, when there is, um, um, when there is, I'll start to explain something. Okay, yeah, when there is an increase in uh, price, for example, and the real income falls, and then you give some money to the uh, to the uh, um, to the consumer, so ensure that the total utility is the same, and the other way around as well. So what you are actually doing is that you are eliminating the income effect. You are not allowing the income effect to take place. Okay, so it is the income effect that takes the difference that shifts. Uh, uh, that, uh, it is yeah. It's the income. It's the income that shifts the difference of whether inward or outwards eventually. The subtraction effect just causes uh, a change, okay, along the same in the price curve. So now that we are uh, compensating for whatever, we are compensating the income, whatever uh, price change is occurring, okay, um, so that simply means that we are not allowing the income effect to work. Okay, so the initial demand curve is a demand curve that is derived having eliminated the income effect. Okay, why the machinal demand curve is a demand curve that is derived combining the income and the substitution effect together. So here you have the income and substitution effect leading to this particular uh, demand curve, and here you have only the substitution effect leading to this particular demand curve. Okay, now from our last class, uh, what I was talking about the um, fuel goods, normal goods, and income and substitution effect of the fuel goods, normal goods, and uh, chicken goods, we were able to derive you know, three graphs, we right? were able to sketch three graphs, uh, showing the, the income effect, the income and substitution effect of um, three goods, okay, the normal and fuel and chicken goods. So the, in this particular video, you know, I've replicated those uh, graphs on the board, so there's no need to start to assess how we derive them again because I've I've done that in the whole video. So what we are going to do is just use it to, to derive our action and the machine and demand curves. Okay, now one thing that you should also do that I was like I said that the action and demand curve is downstream. Yeah, it's it's going to be downstream because you're only talking about the substitution effect. And substitution effect is just like it's just giving a price increase will lead you to consume um, less of the products, okay, that will be damaged to be in demand for. Uh, a price uh, fall will lead you to consume more of the product. That will also give you, that, like, like, that's the same thing, that, that's two sides of the same coin, of, of the coin, right? So that leads you to damage to be in demand for. And that's what, that's what the price is showing you. Okay, now why is it that the machinery demand for is not always damaged to be? Now that is because you are adding something which is the income effect. Now, uh, for a normal good, okay, for a normal good, um, a price fall, for example, which is what we have here, for a normal good, so uh, what I'm depicting is a graph of total effect of a falling price of X. For a normal good, a price fall will lead you from point A to point um, C. Alright, point A, a, uh, a fall in the price of a normal good. Now, this is uh, good X is a normal good. A fall in the price of this commodity will, uh, will make you buy more of it, right? I'm talking about substitution effects now. More of it and less of the other good uh, that has become relatively expensive now. So that brought us from point A to point A. Like I said, I've explained this things before. And that was, that would bring us to, that would us to point C from point A. So these two happens to be the substitution uh, substitution effect. All right. Moving from X1 to X2. Now, what's the uh, income effect of that price change? So a price fall simply means that the consumer's purchasing power is more. All right, it's higher, and now since both goods are normal goods, the consumer consume, consumes more of uh, the two. So more of the two uh, brings us to point E, where you consume more, you move from here to here, X to X3 is more, and then from this point, from Y2 up to Y3 here is more. All right, and that brings us to the point that I said, I've explained this before. So this is the income effect. All right, so in this particular case, if you want to sketch 
Um, this one like this. I, I, I am going to sketch the two curves. Now the initial price, initial price of the commodity was uh, Px, right? It was Px? Let me come here. Where the consumer was enjoying X1. Okay. Now for the initial demand curve, that only talks about the substitution effect. Okay. Initial demand curve is saying that for this commodity, the uh, an increase, a reduction in the price of this commodity. Okay, if we just the price of the commodity to let's say uh, PX, let me call this one to so PX2. Okay, it's making the consumer to consume X2. Alright, and X2 is obviously more than X1. Making the consumer to consume X2. Okay, that's that's about the picture and the one go. I will just as well, as well just sketch this like this. Okay, I call this. Uh, the HD exchange demand curve. However, when there uh, when there is a price uh, fall from year to year, what is the income effect also saying? The income effect is saying that in addition to an increase in this in the demand for this commodity from X1 to X2, okay, there is actually something more, okay, which is X3. So in order to sketch the marginal demand curve, the total effect is saying that this commodity is moving from X1. To X3. Okay, because now we are adding the uh, we are adding the income effect. So a fall in price is actually bringing us here to X3. Okay, so now remember that they are both starting from this point. So you have um, okay. Is not it may not be a straight line essentially. So this is the Marshallian demand curve. This is the Asian demand curve. All right. So that's that. So when you have a normal good, when you have a normal good, this is how uh, this is what you are going to be having for the Marshallian and the Asian uh, demand curve. All right. So you can see that it's a simple uh, thing to draw. So you have when the price is uh, falling, when the price is falling. Uh, income effect in addition to the substitution effect ensures that the Australian demand curve is flatter than the initial demand curve. Why? Because uh, the income and substitution effect they reinforce each other, they make you buy more of the commodity than uh, when you are just looking at the substitution effect alone. Alright, so that's the problem. Right? And when, if you look at it, after the point of intersection, if there is an increase in the price of the commodity, and this is the price of the commodity. What does it, what does it begin to mean? Okay, when if the price were to rise, uh, this is uh, machine here. If the price were to rise here, for example, for example, okay, this brings us to let's say PX3. You discover that you're consuming less of this commodity, all right, compared to um, uh, on the on the machine demand curve compared to. Uh, what's the, the first time you have it on the exchange demand curve? So I believe you understand this. Now all of this still points, uh, all of this still talk about the income and the substitution effects that is taking place here. So when there is an increase in price, the substitution effect is saying what substitution effect saying? An increase in the price of the commodity, value of the commodity. Okay, simple. All right. Now uh, when you now include the uh, income effect. Income effects for normal goods they reinforce each other, right? So income effect will also tell you to buy less of the money. So it's just like you're having a minus five. Okay, uh, you're having minus five for substitution effect, but then bringing in the total effect, you're having a minus five, a minus two. So minus five minus two, you expect minus five minus two, which is minus seven, to be greater than uh, uh, to be like a bigger loss compared to a minus five. Do you understand? So that's what is happening here. So the income and substitution effect is also ensuring that. When prices increase, okay, uh, what you have, the quantity of the marginal demand curve is lesser than the quantity uh, demanded on the Asian demand curve. So that's just it. So in this particular case, it's talking about downward sloping. Okay, now we now move to inferior goods. We move to inferior goods. So for inferior goods, like I mentioned in the, uh, in the that class as well, so a fall in the price of this inferior good is moving on from point A to point C. Okay, where you consume obviously more of the commodity whose price has fallen and less of the commodity whose price has increased. So Y1 was here initially and it's falling to Y, it's falling to Y2. 
Okay. Now, the substitution effect is saying that we are moving from uh, A to C, that is, we are moving on from X1 to X2, right? So simple. Alright. How about, and there is a fall in the quantity demand of, or the fall in, a fall in demand of this quantity. Okay, that's not about that now. How about the income effect? The income effect of a fall in, this is, a, this is an inferior group, right? So, a fall in income of the consumer has less more purchasing power. But because the good in question is an inferior group, that you buy less of this when you have more, uh, when you have more, when your purchasing power has increased. So you buy less of the inferior good. So less of the inferior good is bringing us in what? So you are buying less of X and you are going to be buying more of Y. Obviously, you have to exhaust the income. Alright. So when you buy less of X and then you buy more of Y, that brings you to a point E here. So if you look at it, here the substitution effect is now let us sketch the two. Um, let's sketch the two demand curves here. Okay, so PX1. px2 all right so uh, the substitution effect alone is saying that you move from point x1 to x2 from point x1 to x2 okay so now the two of them don't mind the gap okay the two of them will give us the action demand call the action demand call which is just that's that's the Compensated demand curve. So don't, don't mix things up. It's kind of easy to remember. However, bringing in the income effect, the income effect is saying that, okay, uh, we were already at this point, but this is an inferior good. So an increase in the purchasing power of this consumer uh, would reduce this uh, the demand for this uh, commodity by this amount. So here, uh, we are now on X3. Okay, so which effect is taking us this way? Income effect is bringing us the same. So, what is the total change? The total change is just x1 to x3. Alright, so the income effect is just x. So, we are not able to get here. The income effect has eliminated, has eliminated this increase. Okay, so we are just moving from x1 to x3. So, x2 now is bigger than x3. So, as if this form is right, so we are now around this point. Let's see. Come on, see. XP. Okay, so how do I sketch this now? I have to bring this point and this. Okay, I guess it's going to be something like this. So we have what is the picture we want to go? So here. Marshallian demand curve. Okay, it's meant to be straight. Alright, so here the observation also is that they are both downward sloping. They are both downward sloping. So from the graphs, you should be able to tell easily if a good is an inferior good or a normal good. For a normal board, alright, for a normal board, you have the machinery demand for being flatter than the action demand for, okay, which is what we have here. Now, for an inferior board, you will be having the action demand for being flatter than the machinery demand for, so it's as simple as that. Now, how about different good? Although I didn't sketch the uh, diagram, okay, the income assumption effects for a different good, but we know that a different good, you know, when a consumer becomes wealthier, that is, the price of a different good should fall, and the consumer becomes wealthier, the consumer buys far less of that product and then begins to spend money on the things that he or she would have loved to buy ordinarily like before. Okay, so sketching out that, uh, sketching out the, um, what do you call it now? That's actually your assignment, okay? The yes. yes. assignment is to sketch out the uh, income and substitution, the machinery and the initial demand for for a shipping group. So that's your assignment. Alright, so here, however, let me just teach what you are going to have. So normally you still have the, for PX, okay, X1, you still have the same.
So normally, we are still going to be having the you know, uh, P, X1, X2. You will still be having the same thing for um, what you call integration. The one for is still going to be like downward sloping because there's nothing about the price fall. However, for uh, the GFIN uh, group, okay, uh, in, in, uh, increase in lower price, okay, a lower price will lead you to an income effect. That, and I think you should remember that for a GFIN group, the income effect is not going that. Okay, now I'm already answering the question I said you should do. Okay, well, no problem. Just that I expect you to start from this kind of graph in your uh, submissions. So you start from this graph, then that brings you to this one that I'm trying to explain by. Okay, so now, uh, in relation to the price that when you use the consumer, you can use as a piece of purchasing power of the consumer. And from there, what happens? The consumer buys, uh, instead of the consumer to buy more of the product, the consumer buys far less of the product. Okay, far less of the product simply means that at this uh, price, the consumer, instead of this was equal to x1 moving to x2, the consumer wants to buy something like this, x3 here. Okay, such that the old point is this, and then the new point is this. So, sketching out this demand curve, we can have something like this. So, the machine demand curve here will be up also. Alright, so I hope you understand that. That's what you're going to be having in your assignment. So, that is why here uh, I mentioned that the initial demand curve is, the, uh, is always now stopping, but the machine demand curve is not always now stopping. So, it depends on the nature of the commodity. Alright, so um, that is kind of easy. Okay, so after this class, we'll be moving into the mathematical calculations of machine and initial demand curve. So, we'll be deriving the formula for the mathematical, the mathematical calculations, and it's pretty simple. Okay, just really, really simple. So, for the machine and demand curve, recall that what you are doing uh, it is the uncompensated demand curve, right? Okay, so what you are doing is you are trying to look for, um, you are not maintaining total utility. Okay, they are not maintaining total utility. The price has changed, the income has changed. So, what they are trying to do is to uh, they are maximizing utility. Okay, you are trying to get the uh, best or the highest utility possible, the utility possible based on changes in uh, the relative price or income of the consumer. All right, so that is why you will be uh, maximizing utility subject to the budget constraint. Okay, you will be maximizing utility subject to the basic thing that you were doing before. If you maximize it, it is subject to the, 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 the stuff that happened in the project has already happened. Okay, so with that, what is the best, what is the highest amount of the utility possibly can get? Okay, so that's what we are doing there. So that's why, you know, in your maybe first year or something like that, I was talking about the most objective functions and your constraint. So your objective function under the machine learning demand curve is going to be your total utility, but the constraint is going to be the project function. However, when you look at the initial demand curve, the initial demand curve is already maintained to tight because it is compensating uh, the consumer, it's compensating compens the consumer's income for whatever changes occur in the prices or relative prices. Okay? So in that particular case, what you are maximizing is not utility, you are already having utility as fixed. Okay, you don't want it to change. So utility is going to be your constraint. Alright, in that regard, whereas your expenditure function is going to be the object uh, is going to be what we are trying to uh, maximize in this aspect. And maximizing the objective, uh, maximizing the expenditure of the not maximize, it's minimizing. So you are going to, you are not trying to look for the least uh, cost possible that we are going to incur, alright, in order to maintain that same level of utility. Now recall here that the price of the commodity has changed, alright, we are trying to compensate for the income, alright. So what is the least cost possible, alright? So what is the, uh, what is the, that was the thing that we okay? It make the least income possible, the least cost possible that you should incur in order to maintain that same amount of utility. Alright, so that's just the difference. Okay, and that brings us to the mathematical calculation. So in one, what you have as the constraint is the basic function that you're maximizing or optimizing, and the other one is just the reverse. So that's what about that. It's a very, very simple class. So I just, I believe. Mean, you understand everything that is quite important. If you have any questions, you can just ask them. Alright, and then please ensure that you do your assignments. See you in the next class. Thank you for watching.